Hello, investors. My name is Joe Torrey. I'm a investment counselor with Real Wealth. And today we're going to talk a little bit about how to build generational wealth through real estate. So our agenda for today is uh, first a little background on real wealth, because some YouTubers may not know who we are or what we do. But after we get over that, <clears throat> we'll go into some definitions about generational wealth, then why it's challenging. And then we'll talk about the three stool, three legged stools of uh, building wealth, minimizing taxes, and estate planning. Those are all components of generational wealth transfer. So first, a little bit about Real Wealth very briefly. Uh, we're a real estate investment firm. We offer residential investment properties to individual investors. So, but basically single family homes, duplexes and fourplexes, that sort of thing. And to individual investors, not institutional investors on Wall Street, mom and pop investors. We were founded in 2003, and we currently have 70,000 plus members. So what we do is identify the best markets for investing in the United States. And then we screen and vet home builders, turnkey providers, property managers, basically build a team in each of those markets that we identify. And then we educate investors like you and direct them to the markets that best meet your needs. And you can see the list of markets that we're in on that map. Most of them are in a sun belt like Florida and Texas, but there are a lot in the Midwest as well. And without dwelling on it very much, uh, you can go to realwealth.com if you want more information. Okay, so today's topic is generational wealth, which Investopedia defines as uh, financial assets passed by one generation of a family to another. In some cases, assets are transferred after death in the form of an inheritance. In others, they are passed to the next generation while the giver is still alive. And that's an important concept we'll come back to later. And Kiplinger just uh, recently, a couple months ago, noted that the uh, largest wealth transfer in history is underway as the baby boomer generation transfers assets of $84 trillion into the hands of younger generations, typically millennials and Gen Zers. So that's what we're talking about today is that $84 trillion that's being passed on and whatever percentage of that is yours, how to do it the best way. But here's the challenge. Uh, a 20-year study found that 70% of wealthy families lose their fortune by the second generation and 90% lose it by the third generation. And you can click on that link if you want more backup on how that was derived. So uh, whatever the source of wealth was can go away. The family-owned businesses can, can go out of business. Uh, the stock market portfolios can go down. Sometimes stocks go down to zero. So holding on to uh, the wealth that you've worked all your life to build is a challenge. So here are the three pillars of generational wealth. One is building wealth in the first place. The second is minimizing taxes because if the government's taking 40% of your income in taxes, it's hard for you to accumulate wealth, it makes it harder. And then finally, uh, estate planning. And we'll talk about each one of these in turn. So for building wealth, uh, the two major vehicles are stocks and real estate, and there's a place for both in your portfolio. But as a wealth building tool, real estate gives you some advantages over stocks. So $100,000 worth of stocks, for example, versus $400,000 real estate with 25% down. So if you have that 100 k you can buy 100 k worth of stocks, or that same 100 k would get you 400000 of real estate. And $400,000 growing 6% 6, 6 a year will outperform $100,000 growing 6% a year. So as a wealth building tool, real estate gives you leverage that you don't get with stocks. So here's one strategy that some of our investors use. It's called a 10-10 plan. You buy 10 houses in a growth market and wait 10 years. So a $250,000 house in a growth market, like some of the markets in Florida and Texas where the population and um, uh, job growth is huge. That 250 house could be worth 350 within 10 years. So that'll add $100,000 to your net worth. And if you bought 10 such houses and just waited for 10 years, your net worth would go up by a million dollars. In the meantime, during that 10 years, you'll be getting positive cash flow. You'll be getting appreciation on your properties and your tenants will be paying down the mortgage for you. So as a, a, a vehicle for building wealth, real estate is hard to beat. So the second leg of the stool is minimizing taxes. Uh, with stocks, your dividend income is subject to income taxes, unless it's held within an IRA. And your capital gains 
uh, are subject to capital gains tax, also unless held within an IRA. With real estate, the rental income is largely sheltered through deductions. You have mortgage interest deductions and you have depreciation deductions. Even though your property is appreciating in value, you can write it off as it was depreciating. And then capital gains as well are sheltered 100% if you do a 1031 exchange. And if you don't know what that is, you can watch that YouTube video that we did on 1031 exchanges. It's a way of transferring the equity of your existing property into one or more other properties without paying tax. Finally, uh, estate planning. Uh, the definition is estate planning determines how your assets will be preserved, managed, and distributed after death or in the event you become incapacitated. And it includes making a will, setting up trust, naming an executor and beneficiaries, and making funeral arrangements. Now, at Real Wealth, we're a real estate investing firm. We're not allowed to give legal advice. We're not attorneys, but we have in our ecosystem uh, uh, capable attorneys. Here are two, Clint Coons, who's a tax and estate planning attorney, founding partner of Anderson Advisors, and his link is right there, andersonadvisors.com. And also Mark Kohler, you may know him from his podcast. He is also a tax and estate planning attorney, founding partner of KKOS Law Firm, and his URL is right there. So uh, we do cover estate planning, but we don't do it personally. We outsource that to our partners. So one final word about timing of your wealth transfer. As we noted at the beginning, some wealth is, is transferred after death, but it can also be uh, transferred while you're still alive. And when you think about it, that's when your heirs really need the help the most, when they're in their 20s. When you're in your 20s, you just got out of school, you got a ton of student loans to pay off, you have no credit history, uh, you'll probably wind up renting for 10 years before you can save up enough, enough money for a down payment and get your credit in line. And so that's kind of a wasted decade. This is where real estate really shines. If you were to put $50,000 down payment on a 250 home for your child's primary residence, uh, instead of paying your rent, your child could be paying off a mortgage. He can build, a, build up equity in this house and a credit history. So really a $50,000 inheritance at age 22 is in many ways more valuable than a $250,000 inheritance at age 52. By age 52, your kids are well-established in their careers. They paid off their student loans. They have mortgages. They have jobs. They have credit history. The help is really needed when you're 22, not when you're 52. So when you're doing your uh, generational wealth planning, you think about the timing of when you're giving your kids the inheritance. Okay, so in summary, uh, to build wealth, uh, Real estate is a great vehicle for building wealth. It enables you to use leverage and you can buy more assets with leverage that build equity through appreciation and principal pay down. And uh, minimizing taxes, real estate shelters both your income and your capital gains. And estate planning is part of your tax planning and asset protection plan. Um, so you should focus on that as well. So just some final thoughts. Uh, that's a summary of how generational wealth planning should be thought of. Uh, quick overview. Uh, most investors focus on how to get rich, but they don't think ahead about the next step about how they're going to stay rich once they get there. And asset classes like family-owned businesses and stocks are often not sustainable vehicle, vehicles for wealth transfer, especially over a long period. If you're talking about second generation and third generation, you're looking at 100 years, basically. By contrast, uh, income producing real estate is a tangible asset, not like stocks, and it not only generates cash flow and tax write-offs, but also goes up in value over time. So it's a great vehicle for building wealth and transferring wealth to your heirs. So getting rich is hard and your family should only have to do it once. So when you're deciding what you want to invest your money in, you should look beyond just how to get rich, but think beyond that what asset class is most likely to keep you rich once you get there? And if you can find something better than real estate, I'd like to know what that is. Just put that in the comments. So if you want to learn more, uh, you can get a free membership at realwealth.com. You just, uh, here's our homepage and our founders, Kathy and Rich Petke. You click the link here, it says join for free. Get a free membership 
uh, that entitles you to uh, see the uh, core curriculum, which is three 15 minute videos that will give you everything you need to know to get started investing in real estate. Uh, so you can look at the, how real estate fits into your overall financial plan. It also gives you access to a library of over 900 webinars on all manner of subjects about real estate. We have weekly uh, educational webinars that we're adding to all the time. Every Thursday at noon Pacific, we have a new webinar on a new market or uh, some aspect of investing like tax planning or um, 1031 exchanges. And when you're ready, if you're ready, you can speak to an experienced investment counselor like me. I'm one of three investment counselors at Real Wealth. And we can talk about your specific situation, your goals, your risk tolerance, and see if real estate uh, is right for you. And this is all for free. So that's a quick overview of generational wealth planning and how uh, you should be thinking about it and how real estate fits into it. I hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching.